It's Jan Worm, and I'm in my Berkeley studio with David Proust on January 20th, 2022. Wow. <laughs> and, um, and I'm hoping to give some background information on the materials used in a breadth of work that covers nearly 50 years perhaps even a little bit longer. So um, to start out with, I'm going to start right in the present. And um, David, we're in front of a triptych that is from 2021, which is pretty recent. And <laughs> 21 is recent, yes. <laughs> yes, considering it's January, it's recent. I don't, I don't have to worry yet. But um, this, this is actually um, pretty straightforward in terms of paint. Um, it is not a beautiful stretcher bar. It is a stretcher and canvas that is prefabbed. So for a long time, there's a, a long period of stretchers and canvases that were prepared by John Annesley, who sadly passed away a few years ago. So I have most recently just been buying pre-stretched and primed canvases, but I put an extra layer of gesso on it. So I'm priming them with gesso myself before I start painting. And then, uh, just in terms of methodology, I do go in with charcoal. So there is an underdrawing to these that, um, that is in the canvas underneath this surface of paint. Now this, this particular um, painting, as you can see, has open areas where uh, the canvas so is right breathing. Here, can you see the charcoal on this hand? You can see some, some remnants of charcoal. Um, you can see some um, very dry paint brushed over very loosely. And also here around the head and here around the shoulder. And the white here and here, are we actually seeing through the canvas? You're seeing the, the gesso on the, the yeah. The you're the seeing gesso. the gesso on the canvas. Okay. So that's all inherent in, in, the, in the work itself. The paint that's, that's used and that I've been using for about 15, 16 years is a French oil paint called Sennelier, the company is Sennelier. It's got some beautiful colors. I personally feel that there's greater fragility to this paint um, than to paint that I used prior to that. So what I wanted to do also was to actually bring, uh, I'm just gonna, yeah, I'll just, I'll just bring it right over here and hold it in my lap. <laughs> so this painting actually um, dates from um, 1973. So this is just about you 50 years old. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell the period. You can tell the period. I, okay. I, I would have probably guessed 70s. Yeah. Um, Italian restaurant, uh -huh. Little Tony's maybe. Uh-huh. Hanging Chianti. Hanging Chianti bottles in their raffia um, baskets and plastic grape leaves, grapes coming down, mm -hmm. uh, bunches of grapes and spaghetti and meat sauce and the little family. Um, and, and in a sense, thematically, it hasn't changed very much. The dynamics of the nuclear family are still present in the work. So this painting was actually executed in London. And when I went to London for graduate school at the Royal College, um, that was an a, a initial change of paint so that I started using Windsor Na Newton oil paints. I remember seeing those around for a long time. I, yes, in <laughs> fact, I, I used them for many, many years, decades, until I switched to Sennelier. So what I liked about, the, about this paint is that it's very robust and it stands up. One significant difference is that um, these, these paints are mixed with, um, as far as I understand, my understanding is that they're mixed with linseed oil, which is very common through a number of different brands of oil paints. And Sennelier is different in that it uses safflower oil. And that is so radically different that I've never mixed it with any other paint. And it's not that I mixed paints before different brands, but um, from the time I was in London on, I just used Windsor Newton. But I would not want to use other paints if anyone had to like work for restoration, simply because I, I don't know about the oils. 
the one from 73, yeah. did you paint it and then attach it to the structure? It's a really good question. So um, as you can see, and, and I, I will shift this for the camera, <laughs> this, unlike the others, is um, not stretched behind the stretcher bar. And um, this is not standard. What happened was this, this had been stretched in London on a stretcher bar, um, properly stretched. And then it had been taken off the stretcher bars, rolled up, and shipped back to the United States. Mm -hmm. And it was in other hands of someone who went into a framing shop and didn't know and trusted. And the person who um, restretched it was not um, to our professional standards. And so they cut it down like this and just stapled it along the edges instead of in the back. So it's not wrapped around. And that's how this occurred. And um, as you can see, there's, there's um, some fraying of the edges mm -hmm. of the canvas. But all in all, it looks pretty good for being 50 years old. Yeah. Well, 49 about to But turn normally 50. you never paint around I, the edge no, I don't. of your paintings. No, I don't. So that's why yeah. I thought this had been placed on after painting. Yes, that was a really good observation. Very good. So um, there is a period of, of paintings that I don't have one to actually look at that um, they were done just after coming back from London. So from 1975 to about um, maybe 78 or so, there was a period of time. And there were some from London also, where after painting with the oil paints, I went in and I drew with oil pastels over the painting on the canvas. So those lines are very distinctive and um, were a way of activating the surface. Those also have held up well to my knowledge and there's been um, no, no issue with degradation of the paint surface or the drawn surface. However, like um, oil pastels anywhere, they can't be touched. So you can't really, you would smudge them even today probably, I would imagine. Um, so I'm going to put this back. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what makes you think that this new Saint Elier paint is more likely to degrade than what you've used before? Because obviously it hasn't been around long enough to degrade yet. Right, so I will, um, I'd like to just look at a painting over here for a moment and um, if we could just take a look at this painting, which is um, damaged. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was, it was pretty shocking to see. And if you come in close, you may see it from a distance, but there's actually been um, light damage to it. And oil paintings wow. generally should um, So that be whole one inch bar along the left side, yeah. almost, not quite to the bottom, yeah. but almost. Down to about here, to there, it, yeah. it narrows down. So huh. I've never seen this in any painting, and I have paintings that I've had for Why is that line so sharp? There was another painting over it, and there yes. was just one tip that was sticking out into the sun, and the rest was covered by a painting in front of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, wow. so, so I've never seen this with any other paints, and I have paintings that have been hanging on walls in sunlight for decades and decades. Yeah. Would plastic wrap protect it from that? It or had not? been wrapped. It had been wrapped when that happened. Mm -hmm. So it needs to be hidden in a deep dark cave in a with deep, the Sennelier paint. No, this I you know I don't know because you know some of the paintings have been up for many years, and and um, I've never encountered anything like this. But I you know it, it gives me pause. <laughs> yeah. So the the you know the questions of course are why to continue with certain products when this happens with certain <laughs> materials. But I, I would imagine that this is really an outlier because as I said, um, you know, other, other paintings are exposed all the time. Um, the painting behind... So there's this, only this one that you've seen. It's the only one I've seen like this. this. And you've got others that have been around the, for a bit with... These, you know, these paintings, and there's a red, red right there, red and yellow. Yeah. And um, they are, they've been on the wall and exposed to light now 
for about three years. And you're not noticing any and change? And I'm not noticing change, no. Okay. Um, but they, they, that's an interesting thing about uh, materials, and sometimes they don't perform the way we'd like to, and this is a terrible thing, but in the conceit of the artist here, I've continued to work with certain materials. And one example is over here, and that is a, a, a pigment stick, an oil stick, um, and the brand is uh, R&F, and, and I first met R and F um, at a College Art Association annual conference. I believe it was the one in Boston uh, 15, 16 years ago, something like that. It was quite a while ago. And I loved working with them. I loved the hand because, you know, I'm drawing, I'm painting, I'm doing both together. And I worked with them for quite a while. And then at one point, there was some kind of a change. And this, you know, this is not, to my knowledge, a way to, you know, I, I have no way of explaining it. I certainly talked to the manufacturers, the, two, the developers, the owners of the company about this. I seem to be the only person who has this problem, according to them. But for me, they're not drawing. They're not ever, ever drawing. So that um, materials that I used, you know, way back 15 years ago, 14 years ago, are still wet and tacky to the touch, and I continue to use them. So and what example, what's an example of that one? Yeah, so this, here's an example of a piece that was done in 2009, 2010, I was working on these, and it to the touch is still tacky, so that if I covered this with plastic to put it aside, and took the plastic off, it would be sticking and pulling off paint with it. Oh my goodness. So, um, and, 2010 was 12 years ago. And they say only the climate conditions in your studio lead to this? <laughs> I don't know. It gets pretty hot and dry in <laughs> here. So it's, it's hard to understand how that would happen. Yeah. But, you know, I, I, I did these on canvas. They're um, maybe a, a, a dozen pieces like this. And um, I've, I've done some on panel. So these are very recent. These, these were done, three down here. These, these were all done during the pandemic. Now, I, I had done um, maybe a dozen and a half pieces like this, the same material, without any problem. So these were earlier and completely dry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's no tackiness about them at all. So the difference is, is beyond me. There is no, um, there's no medium used with them. I'm not using or adding any linseed oil and turpentine. With, my, with paint coming out of the tube, very often I'll use lins a mixture of linseed oil and turpentine um, as a medium. But these are all just directly from the sticks and smeared. And as you can see with this one here, there's also charcoal drawn into it. Yep. So there's charcoal drawn into and over. Um, so both under and over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Um, I have these panels and they do have a layer of gesso that I've put on them, on the, on the wood, on the mm -hmm. raw sanded wood. Yeah. I did at one point, um, just recently, and these are all from this period, from the pandemic, buy some of these I got I got these panels that were already primed mm -hmm. so there's a, a primer on here a nice smooth beautiful gesso that's been applied I on the other hand is there hand, no canvas to this it's just a pure wooden it's, block it's just a wooden panel <laughs> so but I have my own layer of gesso that I've added onto it okay. uh, I personally um like having something that's got a little bit more grip to it right. and I just kind of slather on You're a gesso. huge fan of gesso. There I'm can never huge, be enough. <laughs> exactly. I love the gesso and I'm not one for sanding down layer after layer for a, you know, a right. smooth eggshell surface. So if a friend bought you a panel that had been pre-primed and then they <laughs> gessoed it for you, 
to save you a step. You would still gesso it a third time before you worked on it, right? I I am caught out here. I don't know. I don't know. But but these these um, drawings, in fact, are a combination of materials of lithographic crayon and gesso and ink and charcoal. And again, I love working with the wet char with the wet gesso, just as um, just as if I were working with paint. Um, one of the distinctions here, and, and it gets very complicated when I start working on paper and with drawings, is that um, I, I just mix everything together. Uh, I think mm -hmm. I need a little break now. Okay.